Good morning. Here's your motivation and inspiration for today. Somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. Carl Sagan. So get out there today and find it and learn it and enjoy it. And as you set forth on this new day, may your worries be light and may your spirit shine bright. Love me, Percy Wyatt. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hobo's Hollow. I don't remember who made this particular app, but I do have fond memories of the times that I spent here. And I, it's been some time since I've even been in here to look around a little bit and I chose to drive out to the sign. It's been so long I couldn't even hardly find the way. Looks like my dog knows where it is. I came out to look at a special sign that was created by a dear friend of mine and we just heard his final message to the world as it were. A recording he made as Percy Wyatt and I'll maybe leave a link to the Percy Wyatt channel most people didn't know him by that name most of us knew him by the name of Eustace Farmer or kind of in later years as he wanted to be called Atomic 67 as he took his YouTube channel in a different direction and he, he wanted to branch out to other games, but he still had a heart for farming simulator and particularly a heart for one of his friends, uh, namely me. And as I look at this sign, I have to say, my heart is filled with many mixed emotions. You know, look at the one A, it's for Atomic, and the other A was for me, AK. And 
I can't help but to ink upon what we had planned, and, and really what we had planned is beside the point. What I'm, what I'm missing and what I feel even after a year is just flat out missing a friend. And that's what this was. It's just a silly game. But I had a friend. And about uh, when this video will be released, it'll have been about a year since we lost Atomic 67. And I didn't know how the year would go. It's had its ups and downs. And there came a time when I know I came back to this map. We, we were going to set up a farm here. We have fields purchased. We have equipment. Atomic 67 went all out. What we were going to do. He documented where, where all the machines were. We were going to have one whale of a time. And it just wasn't to be. There was a couple of episodes I did. He did, I think, just one. And we were going to pass the save game back and forth. And it, uh, it just never happened. So I made a couple of videos after he passed. Just kind of sharing my heart, if you will. I know a lot of us still miss him. But then after the ad, I kind of put it away. I wasn't really sure what to do, and I still have many mixed feelings just coming in here and, and feeling some memories. And even now, I'm still not 100% sure what to do with the map. It just kind of is what it is. But kind of after a year, I thought I would make another visited here, if you will. Just came out to see the sign. I wanted to spend some time thinking about out a friend. And more than a friend. I just don't know how, how to how to express it. You know, maybe it's coming from someone who didn't have very many friends. And yet I suppose most of us would say that probably of our life situation well I don't have any for friends and but for me in my case I mean just being brutally honest I feel like I lost a brother that's about probably what the equivalent is for me because truth he told the conversations and things that I had with Atomic 67 I had more of them with him than I did even with some of my own brothers. And so to, it's, <laughs> it's been a tough year to come to terms, you know, with a lot of those things. And let me see, what should I do? Oh, it isn't time to combine. Let me just take a look at our map here. I gotta do something while I talk here, I suppose. Well, one has something harvestable. And you know, okay, it's grass. Number Field number one is something I never really touched. I think Atomic 67, as he set up this map, he went out and he cut the grass. So, you know what? That's what I'll try to do here. Get out here and get the door open. Let's see, I think that's my trailer. So... How am I going to get that out of here? <laughs> Maybe I come in this door. Except it's... Well, maybe I'll pull it out with the tractor here. So it's it's been an interesting year. And... I don't know, maybe maybe part of what it is is I just haven't ever experienced something like this in my life where, you know, we all know birth and death are all part of life. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to like it, it's just the facts. We are 
here for a little while and then we we go someplace else and that's just reality so we know that reality is what it is there we go get this out of the barnyard here I don't know if I need to I haven't even already spent much time in Farm Sim 22 so a lot of times the controls here are unfamiliar I'll try to get turned around so I can come pick up my header here I'm sorry, it's hard to farm and talk about a friend at the same time. I'll take out a little 2280. I still think he got this uh, windrower in here, probably because of what I told him. We had driven on Lone Oak Farms, where I did some of my growing up when I was a kid. Let's see. There we go. Let me pick it up. Sure did. All right, let's head out to. There we go. This is much better. And this is also a familiar sight. Now I've got to figure out how to get down to. That's turning the wrong way. So maybe I need to turn around here in the barnyard and head out the other way. Well, it took a little bit to get the machine going. Not bad for not understanding the controls. But I'm going to head out here and I'm going to cut a little bit of grass. I still don't know what I'm going to do with this map, but I figured I would come here as I reminisce about my friend. Ooh, it's about as difficult steering as it was in real. I seem to recall it said that this was ready to cut. Isn't that what the... Yeah, it says one, so... Well, I guess it's uh, ready to go. Sure doesn't look like it's putting much out. As I started to say earlier, it's been an interesting year getting used to not having a friend around. And, uh, you know, it's all part of life. Maybe you have dealt with grief in your life or the sense of loss. And maybe you haven't. And maybe for me, this is preparing me for something to come because I think at some point every human being on the planet at some point or other is going to experience a loss of some kind. It's just inevitable. And we have a choice to make when that happens and we don't always choose wisely and I, I know I don't speak for myself. You know, it's, we can bemoan that, that someone is gone, that they're no longer here. And that's part of the grieving process. I don't know, the, the, the professionals have all sorts of names for how this and the other happens. We can be bitter. We can quit living and moving on. There's all sorts of things we can do. And I just happen to think of... Uh, of a story just this afternoon as I was reflecting on it a little bit of I have a cousin that died in a car wreck a long time ago I think she was a teenager at the time 
and I remember our family going and spending some time with her family. And uh, she came from a large family, mom and dad together, and I think ultimately they had 12 children. 12 children were birthed into the family. I don't think there was 12 at the time. I think she was 16 years old when this happened. I might have been in college, I don't recall exactly. And just a devastating loss, you know, to lose a young lady just getting into the prime of life and uh, getting ready to, to move on from high school and experience lots of joys and things in life, you know, that we, we all get to have if we live past that point and just taken away and from a car wreck and she met up with a tree on the corner of a road. She had traveled many times. I don't know what happened. I don't even remember what time of year exactly it was, you know, if there was ice on the road or I don't remember. Uh, I kind of think she may have had some siblings in the car with her that lived and she didn't. I believe she, she died at the scene. Uh, just a horrible tragedy. And I remember our family went and spent some time with her family and we went to the same church. We were really close to them. And you know, I remember visiting with each one of them. Some of her siblings were young, some were older, you know, in terms of being able to comprehend it differently. And then, then some of the, the younger. And I just remember visiting. We were there several hours. I remember one night and, you know, just try to be a comfort to them if we could. And I remember her father uh, saying something about it. I, I think he was talking to my, my dad at the time, just reflecting. And this is with all the grief, just fresh in his mind. He just said something to the effect, uh, you know, if I had known the day she was born and had a choice, you know, it, it, of what was, uh, you know, whether to keep her or not, knowing that when she was 16, you know, she would be taken from us. He just said, I, I would still do it all over again. And I just remember as a teenager, young person, hearing him say that, you know, really left a deep impression on me. You know, just his, the thought that he had for his daughter, you know, and the grief he was going through, he still loved her so much. And, what, you know, if he could have had the time again, even knowing he'd have to give her up, because none of us know that, you know, going into life, we don't know if, if uh, you know, our spouse may pass on us, or our children, somebody close, we just don't know these things. But even if he would have known, he said he would do it all over again. And I gotta say that left an indelible imprint in my mind as a young person. And it, it I think it reflected the heart of a man who, tried to live in gratitude you know with his family and, and everything and and as I think on that now I think that that's something I need to take to heart too for when, when I consider the passing of a friend and how much that hurts and can't won't say that we like it we miss them all those different dynamics that we have when we have a friend and and they get taken from us you know, we can feel robbed, we can feel angry, all these different emotions and things. But I'd like to just think upon the reasons why I'm thankful that, uh, and feel fortunate that I got to know a Eustace Farmer, or Atomic 67 as he came to be known, at all. You know, as I look back and say, well, what if I had never known who he was? or never had a friendship with him, you know, how would my life be? And, and I guess, you know, we, we don't, we never know the things that we don't know. We don't, if there's missed opportunities or things that we don't pursue in life, you know, we only come this way once, so we never know how things may have turned out or otherwise. But I just remain so grateful, you know, to have, uh, been a small part of his life. I know he was uh, in many ways larger than life, uh, you know, with the YouTube channel that he had. Uh, you know, even <laughs> even though he's not here, he has more subscribers to his channel than I'll probably ever have, uh, which doesn't matter to me at all. 
but just a very special person that was able to reach people in a way that at, uh, that few of us really can. You know, those listening to this, if you ever went to his channel, I got a channel uh, or a link to his channel in my own description, and it's it's going to remain there. You know, anybody that's listened to his videos know they were something special, something different. You know, uh, here I sit just taking this silly farm machine going around, uh, round and round a, a field, and he would have done something similar, but it would have been far more cinematic, and there would have been special music, all these different angles. He'd have figured out a way to make it just totally special and awesome. And the best I can do is to swing the camera around little bits here and there while I jabber away. And I realize we all got different talents and everything, but he was just so good at what he did. And, you know, in, in retrospect, looking back, and he gave hints about it along the way. You know, here was a man who was in a lot of pain, even as he served all the rest of us, you know, with his content and the things that he put out there to make us smile and and bring some joy to our life, including in the interactions that he had. But in reality, uh, he was in a lot of pain. And I just listened to another one of his videos here recently where he basically was apologizing to the public for not having more videos out and he was just trying to explain how, I mean, the pain that he was in and and some of his philosophy on whether he would take pain medication and, and all that and I don't know. He was just a special person. We can <laughs> disagree over whether he should have taken pain medication or not, but I mean, that was his, uh, his choice and the way he chose to live his life, but I know it greatly hindered him um, being able to do many things that I know he, he loved to do. Uh, one of which was making content for all of us to enjoy. And even as I sit here windrowing this, it's still hard for me to want to come back to this map to try to contemplate having a little farm on here without him along for the ride. And I don't know, it's just one of those things and and time eventually heals many wounds, but time never fills the empty spot. That's just the facts and the reality that we all all have to come to terms with, and, and I'm still trying to do that. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. He touched a lot of lives, and I gotta say over this past year, I've been really fortunate and blessed to uh, to be able to get to know his better half uh, just a little better. We we live in different states of the country, uh, but I've tried to check in on uh, on his wife um, since his passing um, periodically, and I gotta say I just I am in such admiration of her for the strength she's shown in uh, working through things. I mean, she's had to take some time for herself, of course. And, and you know, if, if I think it's, it's rough for me, you know, as, as a friend, I mean, it, I can't fathom what it feels like to a spouse to lose someone who's basically, you know, when you're in a good marriage, that blessing is so huge that the world hardly knows what that feels like. I consider myself to be in a good marriage, and my wife is my right or my left hand, one of the two. You know, the good book says when you get married, you're one, and it is so true. It is so true. And so, you know, for her to lose uh, Atomic 67, it's, it's been, I'm sure, incredibly hard, but she's always been warm and kind to me, I mean, in working through it, and, and thankful too, I mean, you know, I, I've tried to support her as well as I could because I, I strongly believe that if, if it had been my 
wife that had passed, or, or excuse me, if I had passed, and you know, my wife was left a widow, I, I really believe that Atomic 67 would have done something similar for, for my better half. And so I'm just thankful that, uh, that I've been allowed to be part of, of her life uh, a little bit and, you know, that, that we can kind of support one another during this, this time. And so, you know, what can I say? I, I just, I wanted to make a video and I'm sure I'm not doing a very good job at it trying to express things in, in this way, but here as I sit here, it's uh, very late on a Friday night and this coming Wednesday, it's going to be one year since he he passed away and so I wanted to come in here just to reminisce back a little bit and and go visit Percy Wyatt and listen again to some of the tremendous work that he put out on YouTube which is still available for all of us to to listen to I have to admit sometimes it's pretty hard to give it a listen you know, there's just all sorts of uh, mixed emotions that come back and come to mind of things we talked about and and things, you know, that just with this change that it will never be. And, and that's just the way it is. But there's lots of memories too. And maybe one of the things I'm going to try to do is, you know, I have this massive... Uh, well, I do a lot of communicating on Discord. It's a pretty neat little app. And he and I had a massive a wall of text, if you will, between each other. We were, uh, up until he passed, we were basically in daily communication. Not necessarily every day, but almost every day. You know, there'd be something of interest to him. He'd pop me a message. I would do the same with him. And before I knew he had passed, I mean, there's still a silly message I have in there, some magazine article I was interested in and wanted to show him, and um, but it's one that he never saw. And you know, I'll never forget the call that I got, you know, when I when I learned kind of what happened, and and so here we are. But there's tons and tons of memories in there, and you know, I've had it for a year. One of the first things I did was make sure that I saved it, archived it somewhere on my computer so I didn't lose it. But I still have it in my, my Discord channel. And you can call this a coping mechanism if you want. But uh, one of the things I've done is to keep it in front of mind that this whole past year, I would periodically write something in the text log, which anybody familiar with Discord knows, it puts the at text log back up at the top. So that way I always have the text log to pair for Atomic. And you know, it's it's a funny thing. Well, not really funny. But when you're used to talking to someone, you know, it's almost as if the human mind tries to tell itself, well, maybe if you write something there, he'll, he'll see it. And maybe in just a little bit, you know, maybe this is all some, I don't know, not a cruel joke, but uh, maybe it's not real. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for, just not real. And by the way, if y'all heard that uh, alarm go off kind of in the background, or not alarm, it's a, a bell. It's a, this little cow timer, if you will. This was a gift Atomic sent to me, just out of the clear blue. I remember he was trying to teach me certain things on how to do YouTube, and I'm not sure I paid much, I paid as close attention as I should, because I'll never be able to make a video quite like him. But he gave me this timer so that I would always know when 30 minutes was up, when I could quit talking on a video, quit boring people as it were. So that's what you just heard go off. But he was just such a giving person, and he'd probably find amusing what I just told you about his text log. But one of the things I haven't done over the past year is, you, you know, it's it's hard facing up to some of those, those uh, things in the past. You know, I found 
there's in most of his videos in his library on YouTube, for example, I've listened to probably each one of them at least twice. Just over time, that was just from general enjoyment. There was times I would binge listen to them, you know, while I was working or whatever, and just take a whole lot of them down and, and enjoy it. But I have found over the past few years it's been pretty tough to do. I listen to one, I listen to another, and I just, I can't do it. And so I've had to put a lot of them away, and, and I can only take them in small doses. But, and another thing I haven't done is gone back and read a lot of the text of the blog that we had. And, I, you know, I'm assuming these are things people would do. You know, as I sit here, I realize a lot of what I'm saying here is putting a lot of my own vulnerability just out on the internet. And you all can do whatever you want with it. But I guess in many ways I'm still grieving the loss of a friend. And... And these are some things I need to face up to, to learn, I think, more gratitude and thankfulness, to be kind of like the father of my cousin who would do it all over again uh, because of how pleasant it was. And so part of doing it over again is, is maybe reading through past conversations and learning more gratitude on why he was such a wonderful friend. So anyway, I realize this is probably one of my worst episodes ever, and I don't even know what I'm doing in here. I'm cutting some grass, for goodness sakes. It's not even very tall grass. It looks very short. I feel like I'm mowing the lawn. But I just wanted to come in here and do something as I thought about Atomic 67 and reflected on the year past and... It, uh, it was just a different year. Being so used to having somebody to talk to at the drop of a hat, he always seemed to be available many times. Now it's gone. And it's friends are never replaceable. You, uh, you can make new friends, but you can't ever replace the ones that you had. All you have are the memories, and you can choose to either be thankful for those, or you can grow bitter, I suppose. And I don't want to go bitter. I want to, I want to be a thankful person and try to live my life in her attitude. So I don't know if this means anything to anyone. It's just me talking to myself here in a microphone and missing my friend. But for those that miss Atomic 67, I have a feeling a lot of these words will resonate with you. If they don't, then at some point in your life, you're likely going to understand maybe a little better. Because I think we all take a turn at this, whether we like to or not. It's just, it's part of life. Anyway, it's past the time, so I'll quit... Uh, I'll quit boring people, and I'll keep cutting some grass here for a little while and think some more things about my friend Ben, but I'll let you all go. Thank you so much for coming along for, for the ride, and I wish you a wonderful day wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. Take care, and give your family a hug. You never know when they might be taken.